Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charters here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis and today I want to talk to you guys about the day before CPI, okay? You can see on this date right here, August 10th, uh, excuse me, right here, August 10th at 8.30 a.m., Consumer Price Index, okay? So tomorrow is the day before CPI, all right? And we need to talk about that because... I'm seeing a lot of similarities to the the to the early June chop. Okay, we've been chopping, and Uncle Charles been waiting all week since last week for some one directional move. And like early June, we've been chopping. Okay, now the last time we had CPI in June, all right, it was around June tenth at eight thirty. June tenth, very important date. However, going back to this on the chart. When did the drop start? It started on this candle at June 9th. So while most of our retail traders, fellow retail traders, right, are waiting for the news to show them the way, which never works, the price action traders like us, me and you, right, me talking, you listening, right, people like us, we follow the technical analysis. We know the levels. We know the trade setups and we just trade it. That's what we do here on my YouTube channel. So like I always say, we must watch the levels. Uncle Chad is like to short breakdowns of support. And you guys can see many times, shorting the breakdowns of support end up very profitable. Especially what happened back in early June. Okay? And look at this white line. I'll change the color to yellow. Oh, great. It's part, 407 was part of my fib levels and those are my other fib levels. Let me change it back Okay, well, I'll just leave it at yellow. Okay, the point is While everybody was waiting for CPI which happened on June 10th The move already happened the day before that's why it's so important for us guys to know the levels and follow them unbiasedly Okay so when we see a level fail, that is our sign. When a support level fail, that is our sign to look for puts. Okay? So while everyone was waiting, a lot of us already caught the move that uses unbiased technical analysis. So what I'm saying for tomorrow, since it's another day before CPI, gotta watch those levels. I tell you guys this every single day. But tomorrow... It's very important because these CPI releases or whatever, they serve as some really good pivot points for the market, okay? they That's what they do. They serve as good catalysts for the market to move. For all I know, the big players, the big money back in June, the big players, the market makers, whoever, they already knew what the CPI was going to say. That's why they made their move on June 9th. And the rest of us retail traders had to play catch up the next day, all right? Because that's what technical analysis is. That's what we're supposed to do. We're just identifying where the big money players are potentially moving their money. Because we, us retail check, we don't have the liquidity to move the market. They do. Does that make sense? And they're going to move the market based on their interpretation of the news, which they get the news before we do. By the time we get the news, guys, it's old news. The, the big players... They already made their move. You understand? That's why I like to follow technical analysis. I'm not following technical analysis or following the news based on my interpretation because technical analysis is like trading the news based on the big money players' interpretation. You just got to get really good and know how to read price action, which I try to teach every single day. So I'm going to make this very simple, guys. If that 407 level is lost, like I've been saying for a while now, but if that 407 lost, very bearish. It's the it's a critical level based on my Fibonacci level. Also, you see this blue trend line that I got, starting from May 20 low, connecting to June 28th high, and also a July 27th high. The support of that's right at 407. So we have an an area of confluence here. If this level is lost, we're gonna get a big possibly get a big breakdown similar to what happened in June 8th, uh, June 9th, okay? Now, there's also something I want to note. 
How often do you know the market makers to do the same trick twice? I'm betting there's a lot of our fellow retail traders expecting what happened in June to happen again in August. That is a possibility, guys. And we need that 407 level to, to fail to confirm that. But we have to, as day traders, we must be unbiased and be willing to change and be nimble. Okay, because there is a chance that the market maker may not repeat what happened in June and push it up. Tricking a lot of us. Does that make sense? So I need to see SPY clear 415 and actually hold. We have not clear 415. We got some washes above it. Today we had a nice wash above it, but we did not, at the end of the day, close above 415. So watch for that, guys. If we can, if we can clear 415, this could be a sign of more upside. If we break 407, this is a sign of more downside. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? All right, so I'm going to keep it that simple. Anything in between is just chop and more trappy moves. Okay, in between 415 and 407, I have 413, 412, 410, and 408.5. Please add those levels to your charts as well. Okay, good pivot points. All right, guys. So I'm going to move on to the VIX. VIX still looking bearish, so be careful here. It did have an up day from the last trading day on Friday, but still closing below this multi this multi-month blue trend line, okay? I need to see the VIX above 22 to get bearish on the VIX. And if, I mean to get bullish on the VIX. And if the VIX is bullish above 22, that could be a sign of more downside for the SPY. All right? As of right now, VIX is having a cool off day. And it's still closing below the multi-month trend line. Still looking bearish. So be careful, guys. And here is triple Q. All right. Barely closed above that. Well, it closed a few cents below the five-day moving average. Five-day moving average at 320.82. It closed at 320.7. So we got to be careful there. All right. I need to see triple Q stay above the five-day moving average and recapture the next critical resistance at 322.5 it's for me to be bullish which puts 325 and 329.7 in play right now it's looking a little toppy all right so as long as below 322.5 if we break below that five day moving average at 320.8 ish 318.5 and 315 is in play i'm only bullish above 322.5 and we must get a close above it Okay, guys, and right now, guys, I am pretty bearish on Tesla. Tesla, two critical levels that Tesla lost last week was the 200-day moving average at 910.9-ish and also my level at 886.5, this blue line right here. We can round it to 887. We lost those two levels, uh, you know, last week. Today, it back-tested both the 200-day moving average and that 887 level and closed below it, by the way. Very bearish on Tesla. I need to see it close above 887. Recapture that level, then I'd be bullish. Put in 910-ish, then probably higher to 923, then 931-ish in play, okay? But as long as we're below 887, 858, 842-ish, and possibly even lower than that is in play, okay? Around, possibly back below 800, okay? So watch that level at 858. 858 is a critical level based on my 38.2 retracement level from, because I have my fifth levels from uh, November high all the way down to, to the May low, okay? So guys, stay neutral to the, uh, to the stock market. Best to stay neutral. And when you want to switch to bullish or bearish, let the price action guide you guys. We long breakouts of resi resistance, we short breakdowns of support. And if you guys are looking for extra help, Please consider joining my Discord. We had a very good trade today. Uh, one of the trades today was we actually caught right here. Got the close below 416.5 on the 15-minute chart. Okay, so we was able to catch the 416.5 breakdown, and it led all dropped all the way down to 412. So just something to consider. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.